Good morning and happy Sabbath. Thank you for tuning with us once again as we dive into the lesson. This week we're looking at lesson seven, rest, relationship, and healing. Oh, I know many of us need some healing and we're gonna see what this lesson is directing us towards as to how to attain that healing and rest. But before we get started, let us bow our heads for prayer. Father God, we thank you for all that you have done for us. We thank you for blessing us and allowing us to get through this week, Lord. We thank you for this lesson that you have given us, Lord. And as we learn, help us to apply the message, the lessons that we learn as we read your word and study the lesson book, Lord. I pray that it is manifested in our lives, that we can be a light or a beacon to those around us. We thank you and we ask you all this in the mighty name of Jesus, I pray. Amen. So this week we're looking at the less the, the topic of healing, rest in relationships and healing. And many times we find ourselves in relationships where uh, trust is broken. You know, we are hurt, betrayed, abandoned. You know, sometimes we are downright abused and we find ourselves in a position where it seems almost impossible to forgive those who have done wrong to us but here we learn on through a practical example of how to be like Christ where he himself says it's not enough to love your neighbor or your friend but you have to also love your enemy and so we look at uh, Saturday's lesson as it looks at a story of a woman who was sexually assaulted and she she's they caught a suspect and she said that was him she was sure a hundred percent had no doubt that this was the guy he's the one who did it to me I was there I have no doubt I would know who he is and the guy they take him he goes to jail he's there for 14 years 14 years in his life and after technology advanced they look at the DNA again, they go through the cold case files and they find out this is not the guy. And here he is, he has been sitting in prison for 14 years of his life, taken, stripped away from him, not from his own doing, not that he did anything wrong, but because maybe he was in the wrong place at the wrong time, just happened to have the same build or the same body structure as the guy who unfortunately abuse this woman and here he is he lost his freedom for 14 years and it's finally been seen that he was not guilty and so he comes out of prison and his name is Johnny and the woman who accused him went and she went to see him and she burst into tears when she saw him and her thinking that he would be angry and she's feeling bad for what she had done to this man for no reason. And he forgives her. Can we do that? Are you able to forgive at that, to that magnitude, to that extent where someone has taken a portion of your life? Some of us can't even forgive people who take a few seconds of our time. Are you able to forgive? We're going to look at that, and as we continue to Sunday's lesson, we look at a character that we're all familiar with, Joseph. We know his story. We know what happened to him. His brothers were jealous. You know, Jacob wanted to marry, marry Rachel, and he wasn't able to. He got tricked, ended up marrying Leah, and he showed favoritism. You know, there was no secret that Rachel was the favorite. That is who he wanted. And... Through his sins you know we serve a god who is not partial but jacob who was chosen as his father abraham was chosen he here he is and he's partial he has a, a partial attitude you know he has favoritism and he loves rachel more than he loves leah now granted that's who he wanted to begin with and so you know but he would marry both of them and he still had favoritism and Leah was blessed by God because he saw what was happening and she had so many children. Rachel couldn't have any children and finally she was blessed with children. She had Joseph and then later on she had Benjamin. 
Now, Jacob loved Joseph. That was his favorite son. And again, it was no secret that he loved Joseph more than the others. Obviously, his brothers didn't like that too well. They got jealous. They even wanted to kill him, their own brother. But they didn't. Uh, thanks to his older brother and they put him in a hole and they sold him off to some to be a slave and we all know how the story goes now i want you to think about this think about your siblings like even say their names in your mind like i have two brothers and a sister and i think about your siblings taking you tying you up in your mind they're trying to kill you your own siblings, your own blood, they throw you in a hole. You're in there and you don't know what's going on. Finally, the hole is uncovered and they pull you out and they sell you to people who you don't know. And you look your brothers, your siblings in the eyes and you ask them, are you really doing this? Do you hate me that bad? And you look in their eyes, they see you see no mercy, no empathy. And they just get rid of you. Tear up your clothes, go back to your father and tell him that you were murdered by some wild beast and off you go to another land to strangers how would that feel can you imagine such betrayal to be betrayed by your own family many of us see that today you know some of us have friends who we hold closer to us than our own families because family can do you wrong they know you from the inside out they watch you grow up they know your triggers they know how to get under your skin. And so family sometimes can be our worst enemies. And this was the case with Joseph. And here, Joseph, as time goes on and we know what happens to him in between, he is finally reunited with his brothers. And they come, there's a famine. And they come seeking food. And the dreams that Joseph had when he was a young boy was finally being manifested right before his eyes as his brothers came and they kneeled down before him honoring the man who was second in command in all of Egypt and here Joseph is not able to believe his eyes that his brothers have come before him and the first thing that goes in his mind is how is his father doing how is his brother doing? And so he decides to put him through a test to see if these are the same man who sold him years ago. Have they changed or are they the same? So he puts them through a few different tests and he, he says if they have another brother, is this all of them? And of course they tell him about Benjamin and he says bring Benjamin next time you guys come back for grains. And they do. But he keeps Simeon with him. And so they come later on and they bring back Benjamin and Joseph shows Benjamin favoritism to see if his brothers had changed. And before they left, he put a golden, he put a cup in the bag, in their bags of grain. And as the story goes, we find the bag, the, as the story goes, we find the cup in Benjamin's bag and Joseph decides to keep them. And the brother's like, no, we can't lose our brother again. This would kill our father. Joseph had already forgiven his brothers, as we learn in Monday's lesson in setting the stage. But he wanted to see if his brothers were the same guys. You know, at some point, we don't know when it happened, but we do know that Joseph eventually forgave his brothers. He eventually let it go and he let God work in his life as God was leading him. And forgiveness has been known for people who suffer traumatic events, it has been known that being able to forgive your oppressor has been something that dramatically lift the burden on the oppressed. For example, I heard a story recently of some girls who were taken in India and they were sold off by their own parents for $700. $700, their parents sold their children in order to have money to live with and they would be sold to these uh, human traffickers and they would take them to this town that was established as like the sex port in India and people would go there you know get their services and these women would be slaved but after working 
long enough where the owner was able to recoup his $700, that girl was actually free to leave. And many of them did not leave because they didn't know where else to go. But a few of them who did went, they left, they got cleaned up, they went with the Christian ministry, and they went and got jobs and they saved up money. And when they saved up money, they didn't do anything. They didn't go buy fancy stuff. They didn't go try to reestablish their lives. No, what they actually did was they went back to that sex area where they were. They went back to that area. They went back to the master and they bought a bucket. And they went and they washed the masters. They said, we're here to wash your feet. And the master, he was so confused and they said that they actually forgive him for what he had done to them putting them through all that you know putting them through all the abuse and he he could not comprehend it he began to cry not only that the girl says we have saved up money and here's seven hundred dollars we're taking a girl with us today and sure enough he was he let them go and they took a girl with them and they went and they worked that same girl also and came back and got another girl. And this is just a story to illustrate the power of forgiveness. When you do not forgive, you are powerless. And so we see that Joseph was wise enough to understand that there is power in forgiveness. There are some things you can't control. You cannot control what happened, okay? But you can always control how you react to what happened. And this is something that is very important that many people lose sight of. And because they do, they stay burdened and trapped and imprisoned within their own minds. In Tuesday's lesson, it says forgive and then forget. Now, forgiveness has been defined as the willingness to abandon one's right to resentment, condemnation, and revenge toward an offender or group who acts unjustly. Now, forgiveness doesn't mean that there won't be no consequences. Sometimes people suffer the, the, a consequence. You know, a spouse who's, who is in an abusive relationship, you are not required to stay in that abusive space, you know, just because you have to forgive and forget. No, you want to take yourself out of that situation. You know, you don't want to be in harm's way. Take yourself out of the situation and you forgive them. So when we forgive, it is something, like the lesson said, it is something that doesn't come, it doesn't just happen. It is something that is intentional. You have to be intentional about forgiving. You have to literally make a choice to forgive. Just like we know the story, the parable that Jesus um, recited in the Bible where the guy was forgiven of a big, big debt and as soon as he was forgiven he went out and saw another guy who owed him a little debt and he threw him into jail and if how can how can we expect a god to forgive us of all of, all of our sin us who are responsible for the death of his son yet he forgive us and while we were yet sinners he came and died for us and we appreciate that forgiveness and we say thank you God but someone do something wrong to us somebody look at us the wrong way in church somebody say the wrong thing in church somebody hurt our feelings somebody say something that we don't like somebody catches us off guard somebody step on our toe somebody cut us off in traffic you know somebody betray us and we are quick to lose our religion, so to speak, and become a completely different person. And a lot of us have ideas and practices that are not biblical, that are not Christian, where we, we just can't seem to forgive others. We can continue to go to church, we can continue to read our Bible, we can continue to pray, but that forgiveness we don't have. Some of us would rather not take communion ever just not take communion in order to stay angry at this person or that person but God says if we cannot forgive others 
and we will not receive forgiveness either. And so we must forgive and forget in the sense of knowing that we cannot keep bringing these things back. We let it, we let it live in the past. What was done to us must stay in the past. We are not the ones who should take on revenge. We should not take things into our own hands. We have a God who is more than capable. Like my kids, I tell them when they have a disagreement to come to me and I'll be the judge between them. Why? Because I have more experience, I have more wisdom and I would execute justice more appropriately than they would to each other. Their idea of justice is punching each other back, pushing each other, whatever it is and that happened in the moment when they are filled with anger. While me, who is a third party, who is absent, who is not tied to their situation, other than the fact that I want them both to be happy, I would judge it wisely. The same thing with God. God sees what happens to his children. He is watching all the time. Even though he had the Babylonians come and attack the Israelite people, after they learned their lesson, he took revenge on Babylon. And so we must know that God must be the one who takes revenge for us, not us ourselves. We have the duty to forgive. Um, and as we look at Wednesday's lesson, we learn how to make that forgiveness practical. In order to forgive, I must admit that I have been hurt. A lot of us like to be stubborn and act as if we were not hurt by the things someone said. We try to play it off, but deep down we have that internal angst where it just keeps playing back in our mind. And whenever we see that person, we start to act certain ways, we act different. But we have to learn, we have to first admit that, hey, I was hurt. And the Bible tells us to go to your brother, tell him his faults. As he tells you your faults, we must be able to be open to be able to speak with each other and say, hey, you did this and it made me feel this way and maybe it might be a misunderstanding you never know or if it is an actual issue you work it out and the bible gives a step-by-step -step process on how to come to reconciliation with our own brothers and sisters now we all know forgiving is not an easy task it's not easy when you have that hurt burning deep inside of you and it's aching it's not an easy thing to just push that to the side and forgive that person. You know, sometimes we might want to be like David and wish that the Lord comes and crush our enemies. You know, well, we would we should rather have a desire to be like Stephen, who says, don't put this charge against them. Or Jesus, who says, Father, forgive them for what they do. And we should have that heart. Though God will still take revenge. He knows, he knows what each and every one of us deserve. And the same justice we wish to be executed upon those who offend us, know that God will use the same justice against us if we do the same to others. And so, again, it is not an easy thing to forgive when we are hurt. But it must be a choice that is intentional, a choice with wisdom, because we are not driven by our emotions. We should have wisdom and understanding and a character and a heart of Christ that would allow us to overcome those burning emotions, that deep feeling of hurt that would allow us to overcome what has happened to us in order to pray for those who are lost. And so... When we look at Thursday's lesson, finding rest after forgiveness. You know, after Joseph had been reconciled with his brothers and they were living together, his father eventually passed away. And this was 17 years later. And his brothers were worried now that after his their father had passed away, Joseph would now finally take his revenge. But he reassured them, hey, when I said I forgave you, I really forgave you. And I put it all in the past. And I put it all in God's hands because God allowed this hurt to be something greater in my life. Something to build me up into the person who I am today. If 
if the if Joseph had not been sold into slavery, he would not have been at the point where he could help his family later on. God is in control. God is sovereign. God does not make mistakes. You would think, I'm sure when it was happening, Joseph was like, God, why is this happening to me? Why? Who knows the thoughts that he that passes through his minds? Imagine that being you. Like I was saying earlier, imagine your siblings selling you off or you know, sending you off into a trap or whatever. And you would think in your mind, why God, why me? Why is this happening to me? Do you think God was surprised? Do you not understand that God saw Joseph in his position as second in command while he was being sold into slavery? God is in control. We go through the story experiencing every moment as it occurs. God is looking at it from a top view. He sees the beginning, he sees the end. He is in control, he is sovereign. And if God is sovereign and he is in control and he has told us that he has our best interest in mind and he has asked us to be like him, to have a heart like Christ, then forgiveness is something that should be part of our character. I mean, Christ forgave us, God forgave us. And so we're we'll finished with the final thought on Friday. It says, nothing can justify an unforgiving spirit. He who is unmerciful toward others shows that he himself is not a partaker of God's pardoning grace. In God's forgiveness, the heart of the erring one is drawn close to the great heart of infinite love. The tide of divine compassion flows into the sinner's soul and from him to the souls of others. The tenderness and the mercy that Christ has revealed in his own precious life will be seen in those who become sharers of his grace. And may we all ponder on that as we think, as we go through life, because many, we will all be offended. We will all be offended. But let us keep this in our minds and in our hearts. Let us see these examples as reminders of things that we most likely already know. To forgive. Forgive others as we have been forgiven. When you see each and every one of us, when you see your oppressors as someone that Christ also died for, and you see that you are a sinner just like that person is a sinner, and that God see all of our sins the same, you know, it might change your mind as you consider to pray for this person rather than to hate them, or rather than to be stuck in a prison of your own doing, of your own creation when you decide to not let go. So let us bow our head in prayer. Dear Lord, Heavenly Father, we thank you for all that you have done for us. We thank you for blessing us. Lord, we thank you for this lesson and this word as it reminds us to forgive others, Lord. Help us to overcome, give us the strength to forgive those who have done us harm, Lord, that we may be saved in your kingdom. And we ask you all this in Jesus' name I pray. Amen. God bless you all, and may you all have a blessed Sabbath worship today.